Good morning, Skybridge. And good morning to those watching us on live and recording. This is definitely the day that the Lord has made. We made it to 2022. And with that in mind, our scripture this morning comes from Jeremiah 29, starting at verse number 11. And it reads, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Give you a future and a hope. Then you will all. And I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me. When you search for me with all your heart. Heart. Father God, thank you for allowing us to get it to this new year, Father God. With so much to overcome for these past couple of years, Father God, you blessed us to see yet another day. So, Father God, we can't just give you a, a normal thing. We want to say hallelujah, Father God. You've brought us into a new season, and I pray in this new season, you continue to shower your blessings, Father God. We pray for healing. We pray for comfort. We pray for deliverance, Father God. We pray that you continue to guide us, Father God. And as we lift Skybridge Church as a whole up, Father God, continue to shower your blessings and mercy on us, Father God. We just pray that you stay by us, Father God. Comfort those that have lost so much in these past couple of years, Father God, and help us to be a light to those, Father God, that have lost. Just continue to guide us and be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning, Skybridge. Happy New Year. Truly, this is the first Sunday of the month. Happy New Year to those who are online. We thank the Lord for bringing us this far. 2020, we thought we would see a clear vision. And then Corona, Sister Corona came and made her presence. And then we lost so many in 2020. And then 2021, we had the same thing going on. But God has blessed us to see the first Sunday of 2022. And some of us had to go through some rough times, but God, we have made it to 2022, and we are happy about it. So we're going to praise the Lord, and we're going to give him our best praise, right? So we thank him for all he has done, and if he doesn't do anything else, he's already done enough. So we're going to sing joy, joy, God's great joy. So if this song moves you here in the audience or online, we just ask you to get into the worship service today, okay? All right.
God, Jonathan. Because <laughs> truly, he's a good God. It's 24 degrees here in San Antonio. I don't know where you are online, but it could have been us outdoors, sleeping yes. under the bridge. Yes, Lord. But we thank the Lord that when we woke up, we had activity of our limbs. We were able to move. Sometimes it was a little ache and pain, but we were still able to move. So we thank the Lord for it. And because of that, he's a strength like no other.
We don't know, but we ought to know some things. We know that the blood will never lose its power. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the Jesus Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation, but it requires the shedding of blood, salvific blood, sanctifying blood, glorifying blood, blood that will never lose. Never lose its power. Because if it could lose its power, we would lose our salvation. But thank be unto God that this sacrifice was once and for all as we celebrate this new year. Happy New Year, everybody. You ought to turn to somebody and say, Happy New Year. Tell your neighbor, it's good to see you. Now you tell that neighbor, say, it's good to be seen. Amen. I know I'm right about that. <laughs> Give God praise for our praise team, for our band over here. Good to see you back, man. Good to see you back. Good to see you back. When I learn to play the bass guitar, I'm going to take over for Isaiah here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take over. I just serve and notice, man. You need to have to vacate that seat. You come up here and I'll go over there. Is that a deal? All right. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> Y'all, Pastor Thaddeus Green is with us this morning. Y'all didn't hear, y'all may not have heard him, but when I said what I did, he said, you don't want that. I always wanted to play keyboards, so I might. And then, of course, drums has always been a favorite, so... Y'all just, y'all just, your days are numbered. Y'all just get ready. Get ready, get ready. You never know which one it's going to be. Next Sunday it could be. You just never know. We're just having fun. Good morning and happy new year to all of those who are streaming us on Facebook Live and those who will be watching on other platforms, our website at www.skybridgechurch.org and also on our YouTube channel, Delayed After This Service Today. Amen. Well, welcome back, Skybridge, and to those who are visiting with us from 
North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, Dallas, Austin, uh, Japan, uh, South Korea, and Uganda. That's just the ones we know about. God bless you and welcome back and Happy New Year to everyone. Well, there's a word in the house today. So we've lifted up praises to our Lord, our Messiah. And now we need to hear a word from God. Have you ever been in a situation where you're going through something and you say, I really do need to hear from you, Lord. I need to, I really, do I have any witnesses in the house? You say, I'm not playing today, Lord. <laughs> you know, you ever have one of those kind of days? Those kind of weeks? One of those kind of years? We thought 2021 is going to be better than 2020. Not so much. But God. But God. Listen, he brought us through, so we ought to be stronger because of it. Amen? Amen. Let's get some help today. Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. If you have your Bibles today, Luke chapter 17. There's a word that will encourage us, challenge us, and hopefully more than just inform us, but make us grow in the grace and knowledge of Christ. You know, this thing called Christianity, y'all, we weren't saved to sit on our behinds and do nothing. We were called to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior. That means I need to know more today than I knew last Sunday. I need to do more today than I did last year. Don't just make a, a New Year resolution that you fail. You set something up that you ask God to give you the strength to complete it. Amen? Uh, it's, it's a walk. It's a, it's a task. I like Pastor Green's words. He said, you don't want this. You ain't ready. You know, and people be thinking, I want more of Jesus. Watch out. Watch out. I, I made a promise to the Lord a few years ago. I said, Lord, I'll go anywhere you tell me to go. I'll do whatever you want me to uh, go and to say whatever you want me to say. And then here I am standing up looking at y'all. I used to be sitting there looking this way. But God. Luke chapter 17, beginning at verse number 11, it says this. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance. And they lifted up their voices. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, somebody say one of, one of them. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back, praising God with a loud voice on New Year's. <laughs> and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving thanks. Now, he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, were there not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. I'd like to share with us from the topic this morning, the dirty job of cleansing saints. The dirty job of cleansing sinners, rather. Of cleansing sinners. Amen? It's a dirty job. It's a dirty job. Elizabeth and her 11-year-old son were considered to have recovered from uh, the coronavirus. And they came out of their houses, and they had some of that sidewalk chalk. I don't know if you ever, you're old enough to know what that is, but you got this sidewalk chalk, and, and you can draw pictures, and you can make uh, uh, signs and things on the sidewalk. And they wrote on the sidewalk, we are COVID survivors. They were so excited to be out of the COVID uh, 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 sickness and, 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 and out of isolation and out of quarantine. Oh, and let me just put a pin right there and say thank you all for your prayers. Uh, Sister Halton and I were in, in isolation, but we, would, we did not have COVID. But we, we were isolated because our, our son was, came in from home for the holidays and he was in quarantine in our house. And, uh, but we, that's why we didn't have church last Sunday. But here we are now. We out of quarantine. And I want to write, and we were negative yesterday. Amen. Just to make sure. Just to make sure before we came back to church. 
before we came back to church. Otherwise, Willie was going to have to preach. And so what we did is this, this family, this woman, this woman and her son wrote on the sidewalk, we are COVID survivors. That's a testimony in itself. That's, that's a word that says, I went through, but God brought me through. Amen? Amen. Well, what they didn't count on is the fear of their family and their neighbors. That when they found out, when their family and friends and their neighbors found out that they had had COVID, they treated them differently. They still treated them as though they needed to be in isolation. There was an unrealistic fear. Even a month until their recovery, some of the neighbors would see them and run into the house. Because, see, if you see them and you have to speak, then they, they figure, you know, they're going to come up to me. They're going to tell me they story. I don't want to get close to them. They treated them poorly. And then other people across the country reported a, vet, a, a veterinarian refused to treat a recovered woman's dog. A, a, another person, the gardener, who, would, uh, who uh, 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 was not allowed to trim the hedges because he had recovered from COVID. There was a neighbor who dropped off soup to a person who had had COVID and he had recovered, but he said, and that Tupperware you have, just keep it. We don't want it back. And then there was the sick teenager, the teenager whose only relief is re remembering how much fun he enjoyed fishing and wishing he could be back with his friends fishing, and that's what gave him hope to hang on so when he recovered, he could go fishing, but his friends ghosted him. When they went fishing, he was nowhere included in the deal. Feeling dirty and stigmatized is not what survivors of COVID-19 expected. The problem is we treat people with COVID-19 like they treated leprosy in the Bible. You stay at a distance. We don't, we don't really want to talk to you right now. We don't want to hang with you, and we hope you get better, but don't come to my house. Don't call me if you need anything. My forward calls have been forwarded to Sister Beverly. You can call her, but don't call me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we, we get to the, to the bottom of this lesson to understand that we all are lepers because we've all been exposed to sin. We should all be living in isolation and in quarantine. But God saw fit to heal us, fix us, bring us out, not leave us in the dark, but bring us into his marvelous light. I'm talking about the dirty job of saving sinners. It's a dirty job. Jesus had been teaching his disciples, as a matter of background information, about avoiding what men deemed highly, but what God viewed as detestable. Namely, they earlier in the book were pursuing money. But by pursuing money, they were being hypocrites. Rather than being the Pharisees that they were and turning people to Christ, they turned people away from Christ. Isn't that a, a shame? Isn't that an indictment that the preachers are messed up? The religious leaders, rather than turning people to Jesus, by their own hypocrisy. But we see that again today. When COVID hit, we have pastors and preachers. Young and old, black and white, rich and poor, big churches and small churches who put more politics ahead of their theology and started buying into the mess. And so the people in the church are confused. This pastor over here says, you don't need no vaccine. Just get it and God will heal you. God can, but don't test God. Don't put yourself in a condition where the grace of God has got to get you out. God is able to heal you. And then God sent a boat, but you didn't like the boat. He sent the first boat. It's called a mask. Put it on. And 
president, you had attitude about that, so he sent a bigger boat. It's called a vaccine, take it. But you didn't like that. And you don't understand why you and your family are dropping dead. We messed up, and see, our theology got us messed up too. See, see God can heal through vaccines, through surgery. Anybody ever have surgery? Knee surgery, back surgery, eye surgery, brain surgery? I know you had surgery. You didn't sit there with your leg dragging, going, well, God's going to heal me sooner or later. When the doctor says, you got a compound fracture. Anybody been to the dentist? Why didn't you just let the tooth ache and pray? I'm not saying God can't, but he provides natural and supernatural. Anybody got glasses? Anybody wear glasses? You don't need them. Take them off. Just trust that that car that crossed in front of you won't hit you, or you won't hit it. Just pray. No, God gives us natural and supernatural healing. Stop being silly about it. And pastors, stop te teaching, teaching crazy stuff that people's, put people's lives at risk. That's craziness. That's craziness, I'm telling you. I know this ain't popular, but it's going to work tonight. It's going to work today. It's going to work today. Here, Jesus seemed to, all right, Jesus seemed to, to take the extreme, though. Jesus always goes to the crazy end of stuff to prove a point. He's using an object lesson to teach his disciples, the 12, but also the people and the scribes and Pharisees. Because, see, Jesus goes to a dirty place, a, a, a distant place, a place that no one wants to be involved with. He went to the ICU when people got COVID on ventilators. He showed up in places nobody else wanted to go. He went to the leper colony. He goes, I'm telling you, there's a dirty job in saving sinners. Aren't you glad God came to your house? If God hadn't, didn't go to dirty places, you and I never would have got salvation. If God didn't talk to dirty people, rotten people, sinful people, we would never have been redeemed, saved, blood-bought and brought, made part of the family of God. I'm glad God goes to where we are. But he's doing this in response to verse 5, which we didn't read, but in verse 5, Jesus has been teaching his disciples. And one of their requests was, Jesus, increase our faith. Now be careful when you ask God to do something for you like that, because he will. But in order to increase their faith, you don't just talk about it. See, increased faith means increased opportunity to be faithful. You can say you have faith, but now let's put it to the test. And even if you don't say that to God, you're going to get a test anyway. Let me just serve notice to those of you who are streaming us live and those who are in the sanctuary this morning. Your test is going to come in a few minutes when we say amen and you walk out the doors. Will you still have faith when your car won't start? Will you still have faith when your marriage is on the blink? Will you still have faith when the doctor says the exam don't look so good? Will you still have faith when your finances look kind of strange? Will you still have faith? It's easy to say I love the Lord, I have faith during good times. When you got money in your pocket, when your marriage is strong, when your children are acting right, when the bills are paid, but oh! Increase our faith. Leprosy is where he takes them, to a leper colony. Leprosy is a terrible skin disease. It, it, it causes people's flesh to scar and to break down and to decay. These people are sick. They're outcast, and, and they're out in their own communities because nobody else wants them around. They're outcast because by law, by Levitical law, when they're sick, they got to live outside the camp. They have to quarantine. They have to get away until the priests say that they are ill. Excuse me. We believe that they form their own communities because they got to have somebody to hang out with for safety, for food, for friendship, for fellowship. People 
sometimes throw stones at the lepers because they felt like, wait a minute, you're getting too close. So they would throw rocks at them to tell them, stay at a distance. Can you imagine coming around holiday, New Year's, 4th of July, Thanksgiving, and you, there's your family member in the colony and you want to go see them, but they smell. Their skin is breaking down and it, has, it puts off a putrid smell. You don't want to be around them. They stink. They got on tattered clothes. Uh, 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 the, the, their fingers are falling apart. They only got nubs where the digits used to be. Their toes are falling off. They're losing their eyesight. I'm telling you, it's a dirty place to be. But, but there's a dirty job in saving saints. Leprosy is the example of sin throughout text. Anytime you hear about leprosy, it's synonymous with sin. But human sin is like leprosy. Over time, it slowly eats away at the soul. At first, it seems innocent and it grows into a terrible condition that numbs, not our fingers, but numbs our response to the Father's request. When God says, go right, we go left, or we do nothing at all. Sin fills us with guilt and disfigures us until we resemble somebody we don't even recognize ourselves. I'm telling you what sin looks like. Church, we're in need of a healer and a savior who will come to us in our dirty condition, in our sinful place where we live, uh, and heal us of this thing that's eating away at our soul. Church, we don't need to go into 22 with the same dirt that we had in 21. We all had to wrestle with COVID or the suspicions of the COVID or worried about COVID, but we had other stuff before COVID got here. We had lying, cheating, stealing, adultery, fornication, gossiping. We had a whole bunch of stuff before COVID. COVID just added to it. It just, it just was a layer on top of mess. We got three things to see how God blessed us and changed us and how the dirty job of cleansing sinners apply to us today. First of all, you and I need to know, we need to know one, he came to where they lived. He came to where they lived. It's right there in the text. It says, on his way to Jerusalem, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. Galilee is where the Jews live. Samaria is where the half-breed Jews live. These are the, these are the returning Jews from captivity who inbred. And so the, the, the traditional Jews didn't recognize the half-breed Jews. They're all family. But in other words, we're full. We're pure family. You're that bastard child over there that nobody like. You're the child over there nobody talk about at the family reunions. You're the family, the people over there that we just, we don't send Christmas gifts to. We don't text, we don't Snapchat, we don't Instagram you. We don't like you, but you're my family. But I decided I'm more pure than you. You over here on the other side, look at us, looking down at your nose at us. You don't worship at the same mountain that we worship at. You don't have the same traditions that we have. You don't even know me like that. And so here you got two groups of people don't have nothing to do with each other, and yet Jesus is passing between the two. Jesus got a lot. <laughs> Either Jesus was crazy or Jesus is God, and he ain't scared of none of us, <laughs> Jews or Gentiles, full of blood or half blood. Jesus don't care about all that kind of stuff. That's something y'all created amongst yourselves to try to say I'm better than you. Aren't you glad that Jesus came? He came to give his life as a ransom to sinners. He came to call those sinners to repentance. He came as Jesus of Nazareth. He came as a babe wrapped in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Aren't you glad he came? But he didn't just come to earth. He came to where we live. We are all like the lepers in that uh, uh, sin has isolated us. Sin has weakened us. Sin has exposed us. Sin makes us cough, sniffle, have headaches, have fevers. Sin messes us up. Listen, y'all, sinners are spiritually defiled, caked with fear and sickness and filth in our lives and our spirits. We need some help. Some people needed Jesus more than others when we talk about the human sense. 
But in the, in, the, in, the, in the ultimate sense, we all need salvation. All of us need salvation. But in the human sense, there were some people who needed Jesus. And there were some people who really needed Jesus, like people with their fingers falling off. What he's saying is here, there are some sins that need salvation. But then there are other people who are in a worse condition because on one hand, you got Jews who had the law. They knew better. Then you have the Samaritans who didn't have the same law. They didn't have the, the script. They didn't have the text. They didn't have the warnings. They didn't have the admonitions, but they still needed Jesus. All who went to Galilee, from Galilee to Jerusalem, had to pass through Samaria. That's like saying you and I are going from Corpus Christi to Austin, but we got to pass through San Antonio. But if you don't like the San Antonians, then you better keep 1604 and go around San Antonio and then head off to Austin so you don't have to deal with the San Antonians. You see what I'm saying? But it's miles out of the way, and they're walking, or they got beasts with them. So Jesus decides, I'm going through. This is not the first time Jesus has gone through Samaria, but it's one of the times, and he came through because there are times when you and I won't go visit, we won't go hospital check, we won't call them, we won't email them, we won't text them, we pick our friends, I like her, but I don't like her. And so you send gifts to this one, but not to that one. Jesus says, I'm going to Samaria. Because there are some people that everybody has shunned. Everybody has kicked to the curb. Everybody says, there's no help and there's no hope. I don't want to be around them smelly people. I mean, she's cute and all, but she's smelly. She's cute and all, but her fingers are falling off. Oh, he's cool and everything. And, and he, 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 man, if you need me, give me a call, but not right now. Uh, I, my phone did. I didn't get your call. Yes, you did. You know the left there. You know the COVID people out there. Some of them are your friends. Some of them are your, some of your relatives. But you didn't have nothing to do with them. Call me if you need me. You know I'm sick. Drop off some soup. Call. Pray. Yeah. Well, we're funny like that. Jesus is showing us that if we're truly born-again believers, eventually, one day or another, sooner or later, we're going to all have to pass through our own Samaria. We're going to have to go places that we'd rather shun. We're going to have to deal with people we'd rather not do, be involved with. We're all spiritually diseased. And since we have been forgiven for many sins, uh, uh, we must uh, be living illustrations of what God can do as people watch us. Why did Jesus go to Samaria? Well, it was the only direct route. Why did Jesus go through Samaria? Because it's where you and I live, yeah. in Samaria. Ah, so they stood at a distance when he got there. They stood at a distance because ceremonially they have to say when, they, when people get near, unclean, unclean. What? When you and I go to H-E-B and you're on aisle number seven trying to get some flour and Crisco, and you're walking down the aisle and somebody says, COVID-19, COVID-19. They're letting you know that they're infected. I ain't got a mask on, I ain't got the vaccine, and I'm sick. <laughs> Excuse me, COVID-19. <laughs> Hang on. COVID-19. That's what they were doing. They didn't have masks. They didn't know what was causing the sickness. Is it, is it airborne? Is it through the blood? They don't know. So they stay outside apart from everybody else. But when you get close, they have to announce by law that they are unclean. Unclean! Unclean! So that you are safe. They were protecting the public. You ever been on a plane and somebody don't want to wear a mask? They don't care about you. If they don't want to wear a mask, they don't want to get vaccinated, but they're coughing and hacking and they're on the same plane, they don't care about you. But here, the, 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 leper, the people with leprosy they at least cared about other people enough to say, I am sick. I am sick. Listen, y'all, that's something we ought to all say because we're all sick with sin. Thank God for his grace and his mercy. We've been redeemed. We've been saved from sin, from the penalty of sin, from the power of sin, but we still live in the presence of sin. One of these old days, though, God's going to take us away even from the presence of sin. The cause, because of their situation, they had to stand at a distance. Even when they talked to Jesus, they stood at a distance 
Ah, remember Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12 says, remember that at one time you were separated from Christ? He's talking about sinners now. He says, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world at one time. But thanks be to God, we are redeemed, we are saved, we are blood bought now. At the end of verse number 2 of that same chapter, Ephesians chapter 2, it says, we are now sons, we were sons of disobedience. Which is another way of saying that uh, our spiritual genes were dirty. Rebellion runs through the human family as part of sin's nature. Thirdly, notice this. Leprosy in this story is the perfect metaphor for sin in that it, it, it tells us all that we need a healer. We all need a healer. E even though we see leprosy on the outside of the body, the real issue was disease on the inside of the body. Sin is... It's always the same. Listen, y'all, we are not sinners because we sin. We sin because we're sinners. At the root of sin, it, it runs deep, and sin proceeds from a sinful heart. Jesus came to where we live. It's a dirty job cleansing sinners. Secondly, notice this, though. He had mercy on their condition. Somebody say mercy. Aren't you glad God had mercy? Mercy. And, he, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master. Notice here, though, when they speak, there's not one person. They're speaking as a crowd. We don't know how many lepers were there totally, but we know 10 are in the story. And can you imagine when 10 people are together and they realize that Jesus is on earth? He is the Messiah. We've heard stories about him in other towns and other people as they passed by. They said, listen, guys, man, I know y'all are sinners, y'all are lepers, and y'all here, and y'all don't get out. But we tell you, there's this guy in the area. His name is Jesus, and he's from Nazareth, and he's coming in this area. And if you ever get a chance, call his name because he will heal you. John says he can imagine that Jesus did so many ministries that there wouldn't be enough books to write down all the miracles that he did while he was on earth. So they heard the story, but they just hadn't seen it for himself. And, and Jesus always, carried, uh, always uh, traveled in a crowd, not out of desire, but because when you've been healed by Christ, you want to be close to him. You want to be close to him. And so can't you see, you see a crowd coming and somehow it gets to you before, you, before he gets there. That's Jesus, y'all. That's Jesus. That's the one we were telling you about. That's him. So they all get together, and you figure there's more voice if we all sing together than if one of us cry out to him by himself. It's easy for Sister Howlton to sing the song, did a good job, baby. It's easy for Sister Howlton to sing a song by herself, but it takes the whole praise team together to bring this melodious, orchestrated voice together. Jesus! At the count of one, y'all, let's call Jesus, all right? All of us, all of us. Wake up, Peter, over there. Wake up, man. Wake up, wake up. Jesus is coming. Wake up, wake up. There he is right there. Everybody, Jesus! He had mercy on them. He saw them. First thing you got to do before you can help somebody, you got to see them. I think one of the problems we have in America is we have people who don't look like us, so we don't see them. We have people who don't live in our neighborhood, so we don't see them. We don't have people with the same traditions and look of life that we do, so we don't see them. They're right there, but we don't see them. And then secondly, after you see them, you got to hear them. They're saying, like, we got concerns, we got needs, we got wants. They cry out together. Notice as companions, they were suffering together. Now, they were crying out together. They were praying together. And look at Jesus' command to, to their crying out. Jesus' command, he, he, his request is for mercy. Their request is for mercy. And, 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 and also, don't keep in mind, keep in mind now, his disciples said before, Lord, increase our faith. Every time the disciples said something, Jesus moved them from lecture to lab. It's like a science experiment. I'm going to talk to you about the experiment, then we're going to go through an experiment. One time the disciples wanted to learn to be more like Jesus, and then he says, okay, we'll get in a boat, and I'll meet y'all on the other side. They got in a boat, and a storm came up. And they're trying to figure out, where'd the storm come from? Well, remember... Hours ago, or maybe even days ago, y'all said, uh, uh, you, we want our faith to be like yours, Jesus. So in order to be like me, you got to go where I go. 
you got to go through some of the stuff I go through. You ever wonder why you go through some difficult times in your life? Sometimes God is growing your faith to the next level. You know, we say stuff like that in church all the time. I want to be more like Christ. Yes, I do. Mm-hmm, yeah. And then you get down and you say, oh, didn't we say? Yeah, we say, now, do you really mean what you sang? Do you really mean what you preached? Do you really mean what you say? I heard people putting stuff, and I saw people posting stuff for New Year's. This is going to be a better year than it was last year. God give it. Bless us, Lord. Okay, here we go. If it's going to be better than it was last year, you got to be better. You can't come with that same weak faith, that same weak every other Sunday attendance, that same weak dollar in the offering plate. You got to do better. You want God to increase your faith? Increase your giving. Increase your attendance. Increase your outreach. Increase your evangelism. Increase your care for others. You don't hear me. Increase my faith. Be careful what you ask for. Jesus told them, now go. He saw them. He heard them. Now he tells them. He says, go, show yourself to the priest while they still had leprosy. That's like a pediatrician telling somebody, to telling some mama, my baby can't breathe. <laughs> Go to the pediatric pulmonologist. And while she was going, she could, the baby started breathing. Stay out my notes. Ah, you got to be able to trust God when you can't trace God. Somebody ought to hear me right now. Hebrews 11 says, faith is the substance, the usia, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Words, faith says that it's there when you don't see it. Faith says that God will when you don't know it. Faith says that God will make a way when there seems to be no way. Faith says there's going to be healing while you're still sick. Faith says the marriage is going to work while it's still on its limping legs. Faith says your finances are going to turn around while you're still broke. Faith requires you to trust God even when you can't trace God. God tells him, I I know it don't make sense, Tisha, because uh, this man is a Samaritan and only God came for the Jews. Wrong? Uh, He let it be known even at the birth. (laughs) It was Gentiles came bearing gifts to Christ. Gentiles who followed Christ's star. Gentiles who came to Herod asking where is he? Born king of the Jews. Gentiles who went and saw the Christ child, bowed down and worshiped him. I tell you, this salvation is for the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, black or white, rich or poor, short or tall, everybody has access who loves the Lord. Somebody ought to give God praise right there. Ah! I don't faith. Y'all, you better get ready. 22 is here. Get ready, get ready. Uh, if you want 22 to look better than 20, if you want 22 to look better than 21, you got to look better. You got to look different. Stop doing the same old dirty stuff, expecting things to get better. You don't hear me. Ah. He came to where they lived. He had mercy on their condition. And lastly, he grants complete cleansing. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, do you want full cleansing? Or do you just want part? Ah, Listen, listen, brothers. Uh, Nobody goes in for half an oil change. Nobody goes in to just get their tires halfway filled. Uh, nobody wants to eat half-cooked chicken. You ain't hearing me. Well, why would you want half a healing? Do you want to be made whole? Ah, 
He's asking the question, I, I came in response to your cry. I came from Galilee through Samaria because somebody needed full healing. He's asking him, Psalm 95, 6 says, oh, let us worship, let us bow down, and let us kneel before the Lord because after they started shouting this healer, the one that was healed was shouting and bowing down. The others only got an outward cure. And I, the, the skin started looking better. The fingers, I guess the fingers must have started growing or they just stopped rotting. Uh, uh, the toes didn't fall off no more. Uh, the, 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 the face must have cleared up. And since they didn't have a mirror, they must have looked at each other and said, Willie, you look different. Your fingers are all back. Willie, look at your hands. And they must have looked at their hands and their feet and said, my toes are back. Ah, we're gonna go show ourselves to the we're gonna go show ourselves to the priest. But one must have caught himself. You ever catch yourself? <laughs> Come to yourself, realize that you got more sense than some people, and you get there, you say, hey, hey, Jesus. You realize it wasn't by your good looks, it wasn't by your mother, it wasn't by your family name, it wasn't because you Googled something. It wasn't because somebody told somebody who told somebody. This is all natural. No, this is supernatural. This is Jesus natural. This is Holy Ghost natural. You don't hear me. Jesus gave temporal healing. Temporal healing. You know what temporal healing is? Temporal healing is that healing you get when you're in a bad position. You're in a bad place. Things ain't looking so good. And you really don't go to church, you don't pray, you don't worship, you don't know scripture, but you calling out for God anyway. God, if you're real, won't you heal my body? Lord, if you're real, won't you fix my situation so I don't have to go to jail? Lord, fix my car so that it runs. Lord, fix my situation so I can pay my bills. And then when God comes through, you act like you've never seen him before. You act like he ain't even real no more because you don't need him no more. You just rubbed him like a genie. Come out and fix my problems. You want an abracadabra kind of guy. You don't, want a, you don't want a commitment kind of guy. God says, I did this for you. Now be a light to the world. I would, God, but I can to the game. I would, God, but you know, that car needs some attention. I would, God, but I got a new set of golf clubs I need to try out. I would, God, but I need to take that vacation. You know, since we had COVID, I couldn't travel. I would, God, but you know, uh, I didn't wake up on time. God says, you don't know me. You don't know me. There was nine who walked away, and they got a physical cure. But one, one, one turned around and gave thanks on this new year. You better learn to say thank you. You better have a grateful heart. You may not get everything you want, but you better learn to say thank you. Do you have shoes? Say thank you. You got a shirt you can wear? Say thank you. You got a roof over your head? Thank you. You got a hoop that you drive? Thank you. You got family in the house? Thank you. You got a God who died for you? Rose from the grave for you. Ascended into heaven for you. Thank you. There ought to be a thankful heart in the house. Somebody ought to say thank you, Jesus. On this new year, God came a mighty long way. I'm talking about a dirty job, cleansing sinners. But he sent, he sent care of us. He realized we needed a redeemer to redeem us and bring us back. Thank God. Can you wave your hand? Thank God. He loves us so much that he took care of us. Ephesians, that he loved us, chose us, called us, redeemed us, forgave us, cares for us. And one of these days, he's coming back for us. I'm talking about the dirty job of saving sinners. Somebody give God praise in the house. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Don't play church right now. 
say it. Oh, he will. I know he will. On 2022, my God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly. More, more, more than I can ask. More than I can imagine. More than I can think. Because God is able to take care of you. Give God praise in the house. Isn't it interesting? He did all the dirty work. All we required to do is believe. He did the grunt work. You want to know what dirty work is? I worked when I was a young man about your age. You're 14. I worked one summer with a plumber. My dad connected me with a job. He said, I need to go work. And he put me with a plumber. Reverend. The first house we went to, we changed the water faucet in this lady's bathroom over in the area near the Coliseum. And we were in there about five minutes, and we charged her like $35 to that. I'm sitting there going, like, this some money to be made in plumbing. And I was all excited. Then we went to another house, and they had trouble with their uh, toilet being stopped up. So we had to go outside and open a spigot and get all the gunk out. And we had to snake that thing. So you look at it, you turn, and all this smell is coming out. And we took that snake, and he told me what to go get. And I went, and we sit there, and we shove it in there, and shove it in there. And then as you pull it back, all this stuff come back at you. I said, I don't ever want to do this again. But I still have the rest of the summer, because, you know, you don't, my dad taught me you don't give up. You don't give up on a job just because you don't like what it does. I said, that's one of the dirtiest jobs. I need to go to school, because I ain't going to do this all the time. <laughs> if I'm going to clean out a toilet, it's going to be my own toilet, but it ain't going to be everybody else's. I'm telling you, but think about us like a sin. Think about that dirty stuff, that dirty septic system, that dirty toilet, that dirty mess. When God left heaven and laid aside his prerogatives, not his deity, but his rights to reign in glory, and put on skin and bones and teeth and legs and walk around. He got dirty for us. He got dirty for us. Then he got dead for us. But he rose for us. And he ascended to us for us. And he's coming back for us. For those who are here and those who are watching. On this new year in 2022, I want you to know for sure that God loves you and he comes to you even in your dirty situation. I want you to be saved. I want you to know that you're redeemed. So when you die, you know you're going to go to heaven. And I hear you. You say, Pastor, that's kind of arrogant saying that I can know. No, no, no. The scripture says it. 1 John 5, and I think it's verse 13. It says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. Five things. One, heaven is a free gift. It's free. The gift of God is eternal life. Two, we're all sinners. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Three, God loves you. But the same Bible that speaks of his love for you also says, and he will by no means clear the guilty. In other words, I know all about your sin and I can't let sin into my heaven. Fourthly, God fixed it in the person of Jesus Christ. He already died for our sins rose from the grave and he has all power to save you just like this story and fifthly and lastly faith is trusting in God even when we can't fully comprehend God we know that he loves us and the breath you just took right there that breath that breath was a gift of God common grace that he gave to you if that's you make a decision today let's pray Lord Jesus on this new year 
I don't know everything about you. I don't understand everything about the scripture yet. I'm just learning. I'm just growing. But today, I, I, I realize just how dirty you got in your expression of love to me. How far you came to be my savior. And I want to receive you as my savior and Lord. Anybody who comes and gets as dirty as I am and love me anyway, but takes me on as the family of God, I want you to be my God. I want you to be my savior in 2022 and for the rest of my life. I receive you, God, and I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. If that's you, if you just made that decision, email us, text us, let us know. And if you don't live in San Antonio, join a church in your city. If you live in San Antonio, come and check here at Skybridge Church because you need a pastor, you need a church family, and you need to get involved in ministry. Amen. Let's prepare our hearts for communion as we do. Willie Jackson's going to come, and he's going to lead us at this time. Father God, as we come to you in communion, Father, let's remind us first and foremost why you did what you did, Father God. You came to save us, Father God, because we couldn't do this on our own. We couldn't wake up without you, Father God. We couldn't open our eyes without you, Father God. We couldn't breathe and walk down the street without you, Father God. So thank you for making the ultimate sacrifice because you loved us so much, Father God. So as we join in this communion, please, Lord, be on our minds, be on our hearts, and be in our spirits. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so as the Lord, uh, for I received from the Lord that which all I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he had broke the bread and said, Take, eat this as my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let's take and break and eat. And at the same time, he took the cup, the cup which represents the new covenant of my blood, this do so after, often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us drink. Father God, <laughs> again, thank you for letting us make it to 2022. Thank you for nourishing our bodies and nourishing our souls, Father God. We pray for those that weren't able to make it to see 2022, and we pray for those families that are grieving at, at the loss of loved ones right now, Father God. We pray that you comfort them. We pray that you be with them. Father God, we know that you are a way maker and a miracle worker, so we ask, Father God, that you keep us close to you, Father God. Again, we lift up Skybridge Church as a community, as a family, and as a whole, Father God. Continue to strengthen us and be with us, Father God. Continue to walk and talk to our pastor, Father God, and pray. I know he gets weary, but keep him strong, Father God, to keep delivering your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. These are our announcements. Good morning, Skybridge. Here are your announcements for Sunday, January the 2nd. Skybridge leaders, mark your calendars for our monthly meeting on Thursday, January the 6th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Zoom details will be sent to you prior to the meeting. 
our weekly Bible study, Bible Studies for Life, is returning in 2022 on Wednesday evenings. Bible Studies for Life will be available in person and via Zoom. We look forward to seeing you on Wednesday evenings. We are in need of a Bible Studies for Life coordinator. This person will order and distribute lessons and must have computer knowledge and coordinator skills. If you are interested, please contact the church office. Want to give to Skybridge? It's really easy. Use the camera on your smartphone to scan our QR code located in the foyer. Try it out today. Men, are you ready for your Tuesday tune-up? The next meeting is Tuesday, January the 11th at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. Contact Willie Jackson for additional information. Ladies, the next Bridge to Womanhood meeting is Saturday, January the 8th at 9 a.m. Contact Amy Jackson for additional information. The next Bridge Kids meeting is Wednesday, January the 12th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Parents, please help your children get logged in. If you have any questions, please see Tiffany Blakely. Grief Share is an available resource to give emotional and spiritual support during a loss. Don't grieve alone. Join a support group in your area by going to www.griefshare.com. Want to give? We are for four different ways. Online at skybridgechurch.org through your smartphone on the Skybridge app or our QR code located in the lobby, through the mail or right here in church on Sunday mornings. To give in church today, an usher or greeter will be standing by at the end of worship service. Happy birthday! Having a birthday this week? Alvin Webster! Happy birthday! She's so friendly when she wakes up like that. She's just, you know, that's why Celeste married her. <laughs> Listen, let me give you some quick announcements. Let me just put emphasis on some things. Urban Garden. Everybody ought to have one of these. Urban Garden coming up on January the 29th. Uh, we're going to be out there planting, weeding, and watering, and harvesting food, food for the, for the hungry. You know about the San Antonio Food Bank. Well, they have a garden. So one of the outreach events that we're going to have as a church family is we need hands. We need hands to gather the food to take into the uh, 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 food bank for people to eat. So we need all hands on deck to go outside and work at 8.30 a.m. And there's the information. For more details, see Sister Linda Howelton about our outreach events coming up. Amen? Did I miss anything? She said, I did good. Hey, I, I get a star. Don't forget... Bible Studies for Life is going to be back, but we're not going to do it on Sundays. We're going to move it to Wednesdays, to Wednesdays, beginning in February. First Sunday in, win on, in February. First Wednesday in February, uh, we're going to have Bible Studies for Life. The adults will meet in here. The youth and children will meet in their rooms down the hall. Amen? Um, and so we've been talking with our youth and children workers, and they said our children need to come back because they just don't learn well on Zoom. They, they get distracted and they wander off. And the teacher's just there teaching to herself. I'm just, I'm just teasing, but we need to get back together. So far, COVID numbers in San Antonio and Bear County look good. We're still around the 2%. Now, we expect to see a slight bump up because of the holidays, but we expect them to be back down by February. Amen? Yeah. Let me give you a different format. The, the format on Wednesdays is going to be different. We're going to start at 6.30, 6.30 p.m. in the sanctuary. Our band and our praise team are going to lead us in song. And, and, and then we'll go into our study and our time of 
prayer. Amen? Because we can't do anything without prayer. So please come out and help us uh, be involved. Uh, it's going to be like a, a small Sunday morning in a way. Amen? But it's going to be more of a study than a preaching uh, opportunity. Let, let, I'm excited too. I'm excited too. Uh, and so when you get information on the church website, share it. Please share the information with friends and family and those people that you know that are unchurched. Amen? Amen. There's a QR code that you saw on the screen, but there's another QR code in the foyer. Just walk up to it with your smartphone, snap on it, and it'll automatically take you to giving. We want to help you be efficient and be uh, 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 obedient to your giving of the church. Amen? Amen? God already set up the way he wants the church to be supported. And, and actually, the tithe is Old Testament. It actually says, give as you, uh, uh, as you have been blessed and increased. I'm paraphrasing. But in other words, tithe is base, baseline. We're supposed to give more than that. So be faithful to your church family. We're still paying the mortgage. We're still paying for lights. We're still paying for materials to do Bible study. We're still paying for ministry. So we need you to give your tithe, your offerings, and above that. Amen? Amen. Let's stand and get ready to go. I'm so grateful for those of you who came out today uh, on this cold first Sunday. Uh, special prayers uh, for Sister Cynthia, uh, Sister Beverly's sister out in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Just keep her in prayer for her situation. Um, uh, so if you want more information about that, you can see Sister Beverly. But uh, also, please keep Brother Alvin and, and the Jones family and the Webster family in prayer. Uh, they had to go bury Sister Alice, our member here. Uh, she passed about three weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago now, and they all went to California. So Cleo and Bertha Jones, Nate and uh, LaShonda Jones, and Brother Al, and anybody else I may have missed, they're all out in California because there was another death in California after Alice passed. So they're out there for two funerals, y'all. So keep them in, yeah, keep them in your prayers. Amen? All right. Lord, listen, y'all. No matter what your eyes see, know that God already has fixed it for us, y'all. He said, I, I told you there were going to be tough times, but I want to let you know I've already overcome the world. So don't let it stress you. Yeah, it bothers you, but you know what? If you keep filling your head with all that CNN, Fox, NBC, ABC, CBS stuff, that's what you'll digest, and that's what's going to make you sick. Watch it, turn it off, turn the channel, and go to the gospel channel and praise God. Amen? Amen. And if nothing else, come up and listen to our praise team and our band. Amen? Didn't they play today? They did the drums, the bass, and the keyboard just like I told them. That's why it worked out. Father, we bless you. We love you. We thank you for who you are and how you bless us. Thank you for coming a mighty long time. Souls and to heal our bodies. Now as we prepare to leave this place, but never your presence. Unto you, O oh God, who are able to keep us from falling and to present us faithful to your glorious name. We bless you and thank you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and our soon coming King, we pray. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. and amen.